Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new issue of the People's Health Dispatch. And this week, we are having a special on global health governance, uh, and uh, we are going to discuss what has been happening at the World Health Assembly uh, in Geneva and what's going to happen at the, the World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference that's starting this weekend, that's uh, June 12th. Uh, and for, the, uh, for our section on uh, the World Health Assembly, we are joined here uh, by Babai from uh, Public Services International, which is a global union confederation uh, who's doing some amazing work with health workers and other workers uh, in the public sector. And so Baba was at the World Health Assembly uh, when the uh, delegates were discussing uh, topics related to the health workforce. And so we're hoping to learn a bit more what uh, the WHO is planning in this field and what we can expect in the next months and years. So welcome, Baba. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Anna. It's a pleasure to be here and with uh, People's Health Dispatch. Thank you. And so just to kick us off, maybe can you tell us a bit more what the World Health Assembly uh, discussed when they touched upon the health workforce? Yeah, um, this year was quite um, interesting, quite significant uh, in that the uh, agenda item 15, which dwelt on human resources for health, uh, had four important uh, uh, sub items uh, and all of which um, uh, PSI had been uh, engaged uh, with uh, over the years in several ways. Uh, and and uh, we, we, we did come up with a constituency statement there. Um, I'll, I'll look at uh, each of these four quickly, if you don't mind, and uh, I'll take on them. One was on the Working for Health uh, Action Plan uh, 2022 to 2030, Working for Health Draft Action Plan. 2022 to 2030. The second uh, uh, was on the Global Health and uh, Care Worker Compact. Then the third was on the Code of Practice for International uh, Recruitment, which had to do with uh, health worker migration. Uh, and uh, the last, which actually in a sense um, is a spinal hinge for, 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 for them all, is the uh, WHO um, global strategy for a human resource for health uh, by 2030, uh, which came up in, 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 which was drafted in 2015. Uh, well, first, uh, uh, putting things in perspective, the action plan uh, is uh, the second action plan uh, of working for health. The first action plan, which was a five-year action plan, uh, 2017 to 2022, uh, came out of um, the, uh, the, the discussion subsequent to the 2016 uh, United Nations High Level Commission on Health, Employment and Economic Growth. Uh, that commission, which was chaired, uh, co chaired by um, uh, then the uh, Francois Hollande, uh, the then uh, um, president uh, of France and uh, Jacob Zuma, the then president of uh, uh, South Africa, sat between March and uh, um, September uh, 2016. And uh, the PSI General Secretary, uh, Rosa Pavanelli, was one of the commissioners they representing uh, organized labor. And um, this uh, commission, uh, amongst other things, uh, um, confirmed the, the, the fears raised in the global um, health um, workforce strategy that uh, there will be a shortfall of 18 million health and care workers by 2030 uh, if, um, if decisive actions were not taken by governments and uh, internationally. Uh, and uh, in December 2016, so many governments, you know, they made very fine sounding political declarations to take the necessary steps to fund human resource for health. And, and, and this would, um, would entail not just employing more health workers, but within the context of the decent work agenda. However, considering the fact that this is taking place after clapping for health workers who were on the front line this past 
two and a half years of the pandemic. In fact, they, 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 they then made last year uh, the International Year of the Health and Care Worker. It is indefensible. We had raised these concerns um, during the consultation uh, uh, process on, on, on this draft as well. Employ more health workers and employ them under decent uh, working condition. And uh, part of the, 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 the issues we also have with the current draft is that it does not necessarily prioritize public funding. It sees public and private funding uh, investment in human resource for health has been more or less the same. Like um, it doesn't matter whether the cat is black or white so long as it catches white, but things are not as simple as that. Private investment in human resource for health drives precarity of health and care work. With that, I go to the next, which is the global health and care uh, work company. And that we, uh, we, we, we we are also part of um, formulating that because uh, uh, the, the, the PSI General Secretary Zapavanelli again was a member of the steering committee of the International Year of the Health and Care Worker last year. And that steering committee played a central role in coming up with uh, the compact, the health and care uh, compact. To put in context, to, to, to put in perspective, the compact, what it is, is a compendium of all international covenants, recommendations, guidelines that in any way safeguard health and care workers, you know, the professional safety and health, on, um, freedom of association, the entire gamut of, 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 you know, um, of, of safeguarding health and care workers uh, and the associativeness. But the main problem is this. A lot of uh, those international um, uh, documents, agreements, are at best recommendatory. So uh, what it gives is at best uh, moral, a basis for moral suasion, so to speak. What it does is it makes it easier to grab to now, okay, uh, refer to this, refer to that. And so what, but what we can, what we, and which um, for our affiliated in is, is how in, in different countries and which we also put forward to the World Health Assembly for governments to show commitment, genuine commitment uh, to the concerns uh, and the well-being of the health and care worker. Um, they should take steps uh, to translate those, I mean, where these are largely international uh, recommendatory into national laws or policies. On the code of, um, the code of practice, you know, um, on international health worker migration, PSI has also been quite involved uh, in that you you have uh, we've been uh, our migration um, project officer uh, has been part of the body of uh, experts, the advisory body of experts. Uh, we can need to do the um, current round of review uh, and um, some of the things the, the are in which we stressed uh, at the World Health Assembly um, uh, are this. We, we, we do think that uh, government to government agreements should be strengthened and bilateral labor uh, agreements um, should serve as the plank for, um, for international migration to safeguard uh, health workers, uh, health and care workers coming from countries of origin to countries of destination. We also feel very concerned that Health worker migration is usually from countries where health workers are more critically needed to wealthier countries. Like for example, 80% of the projected um, workforce shortage are in the low and middle income countries. The amount spent to train medical and health workers uh, in, in um, uh, what's it called? Opportunity cost terms is even much more significant than uh, what is spent in the, in the global north. But then also, particularly for the health and care workers, improved wages, improved working conditions. Uh, uh, these, these are important things to 
um, for, for retaining more of the health and care workers that are trained in LMI system, you know. So uh, the, then the last bit we spoke on was on the, the global health uh, um, workforce strategy on the HR. This, there's this um, view which was expressed in the, um, in the documents for the, for the WH75 that, uh, uh, well, now instead of the 18 million, we probably will be having just um, 10 million short for by 2030. And this is seen as progress uh, that probably member states have been employing. We don't think so. You have a clue to what has actually happened. As at the time the global strategy was put together, WHO had 0% of reporting on human resource for health. Now, it has over half of the states, member states, reporting through the national health workforce accounts. I would say that it is more about access to information for projection than that there has been improvements in recruitment because of burnout, because of disillusionment, because of anger at poor wages, because the, 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 because they are, the, 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 their health and care have not been given the, the, the requisite consideration. We are active uh, as agency in these historic moments, uh, including in trying to better our lot. Uh, it's unfortunate that across the world, health workers have been forced into what has turned out to be waves of strikes and protests, uh, and with which we have won some concessions. Uh, we, we hope that internationally, I mean, in international health politics, uh, governments will work their talk of appreciation of health and care workers. Uh, but we are not going to go to sleep and just um, pray that that should be done. We'll fight to win. So that to me is the greatest, uh, is the greatest hope at the moment. It's, yeah, it's quite a powerful hope. Uh, and uh, yeah, so in the People's Health Dispatch, we have seen this basically what you have just explained that, you know, uh, even during the pandemic, uh, uh, health workers have worked together with people uh, to protect health systems and to you know uphold their rights so i think that's um, you know something that's uh, going to be increasingly important in the next months as we face uh, additional austerity measures uh, we have seen health workers who were recruited during the pandemic losing their jobs now that their governments are cutting off uh, some of the emergency measures. So uh, I completely agree that the good times are not ahead and it's going to be a lot of fighting uh, for health workers if, uh, if, you know, if we all want to have strong and public health systems anytime soon. Um, and actually that's, uh, that's my last question and something to toss off here. Um, uh, based on the discussions that were held at the WHO, uh, and based on what you are seeing on the ground, uh, what do you expect uh, to see in the future? So uh, are there any particular worries that uh, are, uh, you know, PSI seeing uh, when it comes to, to your membership? And what's good? Anyway, what, what are you expecting to see? Uh, yeah, well, um, talking of the future, I want to start from the immediate future and... Um, I'm talking of days from now, which is um, the ministerial, the WTO ministerial. Um, we, we feel disappointed uh, at the uh, so-called consensus um, resolution, imagine, after um, two years of um, struggle for a people's vaccine, which uh, is hinged on uh, um, the trips waiver, uh, but just like um, when I talked about mixed feelings regarding WHA 75, looking further into the future, um, I still have mixed feelings, um, but I, 
I, I draw from Gramsci um, to have um, pessimism of the of the intellect and uh, optimism of the of the of the will for us. And this is why I come with the WTO. Even within the WHO, we're we're, we're fighting for that. Um, we have five key um, takes which we have put before the intergovernmental negotiating body. First is you cannot separate crisis preparedness from the, the nature of the health system itself. So, and um, publicly funded and delivered uh, health for all uh, as a right uh, um, is, is, is the point of departure is the bedrock for crisis preparedness. Uh, secondly, we're also happy at uh, you know, this talk about uh, one health approach and all that. Although we would rather have for that align with uh, the perspective of a one structural uh, health approach, which looks at and addresses uh, uh, the political and economic structural basis uh, of the web of life. Um, and that leads us to uh, stressing the need for uh, fundamental reforms of um, the, the financial uh, trade and, uh, uh, and taxation architecture uh, uh, globally. Um, then uh, we, the, the issue of corporations profiting from pandemics too, it is nauseating. It, it is like, it is blood money. It is a shame that you have some 40 million COVID-19 billionaires, and many of these them from these vaccine corporation, vaccine developers. So for us, a very key element of our demands also is that there should be mechanism for automatic trigger uh, of waiver of intellectual property rights on what could be pandemic products, where and when uh, a public health emergency of international concern effect. Is declared. Circling back to the heart of your uh, of your of your question, and uh, talking now um, from the heart, um, the optimist here, uh, even whilst I see the landmines, uh, there's hope. There's hope in that the pandemic has opened people's eyes on several things. Uh, for example, a lot of people couldn't uh, connect the dots between, you know, trade. Uh, finance and health. I mean, you know, so people, uh, people will will uh, are more ready to ask questions, uh, are more ready to fight, and then uh, the challenge is for us also uh, to be there in front with programs, with alternatives, uh, and um, ceaselessly and tenaciously uh, mobilizing and organizing to bring to bat. Uh, 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 a new world uh, uh, from the ashes of the old to borrow from the solidarity song of Ralph Chaplin. And I think now more than ever, trade unions and civil society organizations need to um, blast that trumpet even louder now and uh, more meaningfully uh, uh, that we blew uh, 20 years back in struggling to make sure that uh, that other world which is possible where right to health would be would be fully realized and uh, yeah that is my my take on that uh, anna <laughs> thank you so much baba so uh, that actually covers everything that we had in mind for the who uh, for the world health assembly and of course we're still looking ahead to the wto ministerial is going to be interesting. The so-called consensus is not looking so consensual at all, and of course we're uh, we're all looking forward to see what how how that ends. Uh, but yes, thank you for sharing the hopes and uh, you know the outlooks for the health workers' fights that are coming up and that are going to be supported by people or all around the world. So thanks again for joining us, Abba, and hope to see you in the next issue also.